What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell and in today's video we're going over one of the most aggressive and chaotic chess openings in the history of chess. And this opening has been played by players such as Gary Kasparov, Mikhail Tal, and Magnus Carlsen. Now first off, shout out to my guy for recommending that we make a video on this. And the opening we're going to be going over guys is the Sicilian Dragon. One of the most aggressive responses to e4 that black can play. And it starts off with the Sicilian defense with c5. And now after knight f3, we have d6. We trade off in the main line in the center of the board. And now we play knight f6, just naturally developing the knight and putting some pressure on that center pawn on e4. And after knight c3, guys, we have so many options here. We can play knight c6. We can play e6. We can play a6 into the knight orf variation. But today we're going to be going over g6. The dragon variation, the Sicilian dragon, one of the most aggressive responses to White's main line against the Sicilian. And really, guys, we're going to be going over two moves here. Bishop e3, which is by far White's most aggressive response, and then bishop e2. Now, guys, let's first go over bishop e3. Basically, what we're going to have here is we're going to play bishop g7 and castle kingside, while White plays a move like queen d2 and castles queenside, and what we're going to have is a race. Black is going to try to checkmate the white king, and white is going to try to checkmate the black king. As you can imagine, things get intense very quickly. Here we're going to play bishop g7, and after f3, we're now going to castle kingside. Really, no matter what white does here, we're going to play knight c6. And after a move like bishop c4, very aggressive and good move from white, putting the bishop on a very active diagonal, attacking that f7 pawn. We're now going to play bishop d7, and after castling queenside, we're going to play rook c8. Guys, the rook on c8 is a vital idea in the Sicilian dragon, and in this position in particular, we're putting pressure on both the bishop on c4, and maybe even eventually the king on c1. Now after a move like bishop b3, getting out of the line of fire, we're now going to play knight e5 centralizing the knight and now guys after a move like h4 we're going to play h5 why are we playing h5 well really guys we're trying to slow white's attack down we're going to play h5 and as you guys can see here it's pretty hard for white to push with a move like g4 because we have such a strong hold on that square with both the pawn on h5 the knight pair and the bishop on d7 now here in this position guys there's really two main ideas that you're gonna see white throw at you one of them is putting the bishop on g5 to eventually trade off and play g4. The next one is to play bishop h6. Let's go over bishop h6. Now, after bishop h6 is played, guys, in most Sicilian dragon variations, we're not going to want to take this bishop because then queen takes h6 could be played, and the queen on h6 would be very active. Instead, we're going to continue to attack the king on c1 by playing a move like knight c4. And after bishop takes c4, we're going to take with the rook, trade off on g7. And now, guys, after a move like king b1, we're going to play queen a5, again, aggressively playing. Now we have rook fc8 ideas, and we also have potential b5 and b4 ideas. We're going to continue to aggressively go after that king on b1. So guys, if white ever does play bishop h6, it might be tempting, but don't take that bishop. Let white use another move to take on g7. And after king takes g7, you're still going to have control of that h6 square. What about the move bishop g5? Well, in this position, in the main line of the Sicilian dragon, we're actually going to play rook c5. What on earth is black doing? Well, first off, black is preparing to create a battering ram eventually with this rook on f8 coming to c8 and putting more pressure on that king on c1. But immediately, black is actually playing this to support the b5 push. After king b1, we're now going to play b5 followed by a5. And here, guys, after a move like g takes h5, we're going to take back with the knight. And as you guys can see, we have some pretty intense chess here. The computer program has a very even position. And really, guys, as I've said, white is going to try to attack this king on g8. And white does have some active pieces. A solid knight on d4, a strong bishop on b3 attacking that f7 square, and a bishop putting pressure on e7. Now, black, on the other hand, has a strong knight on h5, really holding down the king side of the board. 
a strong knight on e5, a very strong bishop on g7, preparing to create a potential tactic later in the game, a strong rook on c5, and on top of that, pawns on b5 and a5 that can eventually push with b4 and or a4. As you guys can see, this is a very intense position. And really, guys, learning to play attacking chess just comes with time. But I think that many of you, especially you attacking aggressive chess players, will really enjoy this opening. So guys, we just went over bishop e3. And again, if bishop e3, we're going to play bishop g7, castle king side, and do everything we can to checkmate the white king. What if white plays the move bishop e2? Well, guys, bishop e2 is a more passive option for white. And against bishop e2, I think that the best move for black is knight c6. Now, the most popular option here is bishop to g7. But I think that with knight c6, black at the grandmaster level performs much better with this move. And honestly, from a strategy standpoint, black is right away putting pressure in the center of the board on the knight on d4. Now, I personally think the best move for white is bishop e3. But let's go over the move castling kingside. Castling kingside is a very common idea here for white. Play bishop e2, castle kingside, and try to create a more peaceful game. Now, castling kingside, I think the best option is to take on d4 with the knight, and after queen takes d4, play bishop g7. Here, this strong bishop on g7 is putting pressure eventually on that queen on d4. The line of attack is there, and after a move like bishop g5, we're going to have a castle kingside, and now I think white's best option is to get out of the way with this queen by playing a move like queen e3, queen d3, queen d2. And after a move like queen d2, we're actually going to play bishop e6, followed by rook c8. As you guys know in chess, we want to put our rooks on the open files. And after a move like bishop h6, again, guys, we're not going to take that bishop. We're not going to allow white to have a strong queen on h6, but instead... We're going to play queen b6, take on g7, and here, guys, I like black's game more. In fact, I think black is clearly better. Here in this position, black with the queen is putting pressure on the pawn on b2, and I think white's best option is probably to play a move like rook b1 or queen c1, but white doesn't want to do this. White doesn't want to play a move like rook b1 or queen c1 at move 13. Black is completely better here, and after a move like b3, we're now going to be able to play queen a5. See what we're doing here, guys? We have a queen on a5 and a rook on c8, both putting an immense amount of pressure on the knight on c3. And after a move like knight b1, we're simply going to take on d2. And after rook takes d2, defending the pawn on c2, we can now play knight takes e4, and black has a clearly better game. Now, guys, what if white doesn't want to allow black to take on d4 and then play bishop g7 putting pressure on that queen and instead plays a move like bishop e3. Well here guys we're not going to take on d4 because then the bishop could become activated putting pressure on our knight on f6. So here we're going to play bishop g7 and after castling kingside we're now going to match that move by castling kingside and then playing a move like bishop d7. Again key idea here guys put the rook on c8. And after f4, we're now going to play a6, preparing a b5 push. And after a move like rook d1, we're going to continue with our idea of b5. And after a3, slowing down our attacking chances on the queen side of the board, looking to create space, we're now going to play queen c7. And after a move like knight b3, we're going to bring our bishop to e6. Guys, look at the natural pattern here. We're going to play bishop g7, castle kingside, put our rook on c8, bring the knight to c6, and then put the queen on c7, b6, or a5. Eventually, play a move like bishop e6. And here, guys, in this position, after a move like rook fe1, we can now play a move like queen b7, helping to prepare a potential b4 push. And I like black's game here. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Sicilian dragon. Again, guys, very aggressive opening. And similar to the Sicilian Nidorf, it is very rich in theory. So if you want to play this at a high level, you're really going to have to understand the variations. But not just the variations, but the moves, ideas, principles, opening theory, opening strategy behind these moves. I personally recommend checking out the games of Mikhail Tall and Gary Kasparov, as well as Magnus Carlsen. 
And on top of that, guys, if you're really getting started with this opening, I recommend watching this video a few times, maybe come back every week or so, and just get the general knowledge of this opening so that you're prepared for whatever comes at you. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what other openings you'd like to see covered on this channel, and I'm wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.